Well, the winds come up to like 30 knots at times, and I was reefing, and the, the furler for the Genoa, every time I'd reef in, it would just spin back out. Oh, sure, so that's, that's what we are. Yeah, so I gotta see what. Uh, the whole thing came out because we just put it in the reef, and then. So you don't want that happening when the winds are fucking strong, you know? Yeah, I know. We're about halfway to Bermuda and just settling in for the night. The wind is picking up and the furler for the Genoa seems to be slipping. So I need to go to the bow to make sure the locking pin is in place. Pretty south at one point, and then Brady and I put in a jibe, threw it over, and yeah, now the thing seems to unfurl itself for some reason. It slipped. That's crazy, they didn't like totally change direction. It's it fine, yeah. Got loose bolts in the... Whoa, it's really far around now, huh? Yeah, I already turned us 30. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. It keeps varying. Everything seemed okay with the furler, but just as I got back to the cockpit, the wind started to seriously shift. A squall was about to overtake Delos. This is the story of Delos, a sailboat that's been cruising around the world for over a decade. I jumped on board 10 years ago, not knowing that one day I'd be stepping up as captain, with my girlfriend and first mate by my side. Over 50 crew have called Delos home, and that tradition of sharing the adventure continues this season as we write the next chapter of the Delos story during a lap around the North Atlantic Ocean. If you enjoy Delos videos, please hit subscribe. It's a fast and free way to keep our journey going. So what's it coming out of now? Like the north? Yeah. Out of the north. It was out of the southwest for so long yeah. and I jived. Uh, okay, well, we can play the game with the wind and we'll drive back. Drive back. Yeah. I don't want it. I don't want it to be this high on the on the beam with the pull out. So. Yeah. Did it just swing around? Like how long did it take for it to swing from south to north? Just oh, as I went up there. Yeah, yeah. Literally, by the time you came out, yeah. it swung like it. It was, it was blowing southwest and now it's northwest. That's a good yeah, with the like coming out. Ten, right? ten seconds or so. Hmm. Yeah, what the fuck? The wind is out, dead out of the north. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Oh, here it is. That's why. This is If you want to actually ease off for a little, a little bit more, put more of a reef in. Reef it, it's up. Yep. Ease the pull. That's a big ease. Alright, let's hold off there for a minute. Proceed. 35. I'm like, I'm like 
so trying to figure what the fuck is going on. <laughs> you just keep keep that camera roll on there. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Hold on. I know my roll. job. I know my job. <laughs> Working. Now it's gonna leave us with a bunch of swell. Yeah, confused wind. And just as the squall started to pass, our wind instruments started to malfunction. They were telling me the wind was coming from the bow of Delos. But by looking at the flags, we could obviously see the wind was on the beam. So why is the wind showing us coming from there when it's obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. on the right yeah. 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 Really? Yes. Yeah, so uh, the wind gauge is fucked. Yeah. yeah. Oh, holy shit. Holy yeah. fuck. Uh, it's, it's pretty much out of the east southeast now. And it's probably blowing a steady 20, 25. And, um, but our wind gauge, I don't know what happened. Maybe it got spun a little bit up there because it's not one of the ones with the tail, like a wind vane. It's ultrasonic, so it sees the wind going through the holes. But if it gets, if it gets spun, it doesn't know which way the bow of the boat is pointing. So if it, it thinks the boat's pointing that way, then it thinks the wind's coming on the beam. I don't know how that could have happened. I don't know. That's really weird for that to happen, but that's all I can think of. Because right now it shows it's coming from in front of us, and it's obviously not. <laughs> So for the rest of the night, we're just going to have to go by the flags and then in the morning we can uh, try to calibrate it again or I can at least look up there and see. I don't know what I'll be able to tell, but there's no point in trying to mess with it now. If this continues, we'll just stay on the second, third, we're on like the fifth reef now. So yeah. we, can, we, can, we can probably put a little bit out or leave it, whatever we're doing, five and a half knots and that's it. Right. All right. That's that then. Rest the day. See you in a couple hours for my watch. Okay, see you man. Go get some rest. Okay. Good morning. It is about 2 a.m. and I've been on watch for a couple hours out here. But um, I was just kind of thinking about our last Atlantic passage when we left from Namibia and sailed across to Brazil and uh, how much more consistent it was <laughs> and really really chill and this one's already off to a very different action filled sail change vibe so it's definitely fun um, but yeah we just have to be a, a lot more on our game glad that Brady was the one that was on watch when that one came through. He is very good at clicking into serious mode when shit hits the fan. <laughs> Whether it's diving or anything with sailing or someone getting hurt or anything like that. He's just very capable of keeping calm and doing what needs to be done. And I really, really respect that about him. Like 5.30, 5.45, 
my watch is just coming to an end. It's been really, really chill, super consistent winds. And yeah, we're making good speed, like seven, eight knots. We got the swell behind us. Fair winds and following seas, all is well. So, yeah, <laughs> Sean's theory is a seagull flew into our wind instrument and fucked it all up, but. No, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, um, to reset this, we need to motor dead into the wind and these shitty two meter swells and then zero the instruments from down here so it knows we're at exactly zero degrees right off the nose. I'm just gonna go a little bit faster so we can keep steerage and when I tell you, press that accept button. I'm looking at the flags to see what's dead up wind. Okay, I think that's as close as I'm gonna get it. Yeah, accept, yep. wind direction, set to zero, press any key to continue. Let's bear away and sail again and see how it does. After checking on the instruments for the next hour or so, it seems that the calibration has worked. It could have been a problem with the electrical storm we were in the night before, or the instrument itself was actually turned by the strong wind. For now, we'll continue to keep an eye on it and have a proper look up the mast once we arrive in Bermuda. Last night was crazy. Yo, buddy. <laughs> but Brady, Sean and Blue handled it, handled it pretty well. And they kept the heads pretty calm, which is a good, a good sign. I just still feel so ill, so annoying. It's <laughs> really very frustrating. It's not like I'm going to throw up, it's a constant stomach kind of churning. It's frustrating because I want to be able to just relax and read and, and play guitar and do stuff and just do things and film, but yeah, hopefully I haven't felt as ill today as I have done other days, so hopefully it will go away. Maybe tomorrow or the day after, but other than that, it's totally surreal. Totally surreal out here. Just vast expanse of water, just, just huge. Crazy. Would you make me a call fear too? I don't want to head out half asleep. Swallowed a cannonball in my dream. And it's pulling me back underneath my sheet. Freezing out the morning blues. Well, I'm here, I ain't no coward. I was never hiding from you. A couple calls, a few forlorn stares. When whistles and the windows all he dares to question me. We run. Gotta stay fit. You gotta stay fit. We have a beautiful day of sailing today. We've got like at least 20, 25 dead behind us. Delos is set into her little motion. Sailing down the waves. And everything's smooth. We're doing like seven to eight knots. Making really good progress, going in the right direction. Yeah, I guess it's uh, about that time on day three where everything just kind of settles in, including the crew. So we got people working out, people cooking, people sleeping, people watching movies, all of the above. We got baby brother down here. Passed out cold. Passed out cold. Every once in a while he wakes up and he's just like, it's so rolly! <laughs> he goes back to sleep. <laughs> Aww. Like, oh man, you're gonna be alright. And you're downloading weather over there, I see. Yep, we're getting sucked into this low pressure system just as we had hoped. Uh, now we just need to see if we can keep up with it because it's moving quite fast. And uh, if we, if it goes 
ahead of us, then we're going to get caught in a pretty high pressure, no wind zone with this kind of swell. So the wind will go, but the swells will stay, and that'll suck. I often think about what it would be like to travel back in time to the 1700s to visit Captain Cook and try to explain to him how we predict the weather. A satellite phone and an iPad is all it takes these days to get a pretty accurate forecast while at sea. In a way, using this technology removes us from the art of what sailing was back then. Being able to read the currents, the clouds, and the wind was the difference between life and death. Luckily, there's still a passion for this out there, and Sean was about to give us a little lesson. Weather reports from Sion. From Sion at sea. <laughs> So as you can see there on our port side, we got a bit of a CB going on, which is just a short letter for abbreviation of the cloud, which is cumulonimbus. Basically what you got going on there is big up and down drafts. So that's why the shape of the cloud is formate, formated that way. Because once all that hot air starts getting pulled off the ocean, that starts going up and then cools, condenses, comes down and that hot air keeps pushing that cloud up and up and up and then what's happening you can see over there is starting to anvil and that's getting up to the jet stream basically where the level caps off hits the jet stream and that cloud starts blowing it it's cap off nice nah, pretty cool it's massive just everything's blowing that way so we're pretty safe uh we just got to watch what's coming from behind us <laughs> Nice. That's it. Okay. Oh, so that's the new one. Ah, you met? This is my sunscreen that I make. Nice. It's good for your skin. It's good for the ocean. Yeah. And despite what Ruben thinks, because he's just 19 and he hasn't fully developed his smell buds yet, it smells delicious. <laughs> Alex. Yeah? What is the thing that you most miss when uh, you are out of out in sea? Mmm. I would say overall the thing that I miss most living on a boat is the mountains and the snow. Definitely having that that balance and yeah just that feeling of being like surrounded by huge pine trees and you wake up and there's a foot of snow and it's like Peter pattering down and you and all your friends are gearing up and going to the mountain and, and then you just whoosh, ride down on powder. I love that. I think the n normalcy of being able to like the normal life of calling up a friend and going and having a beer. <laughs> okay, I'm allergic to the, I'm also allergic to the ocean. <laughs> uh, but like for a pirate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, little brother? I don't know. Not feeling sick. <laughs> yeah, probably nothing to say. Yeah, that would be, yeah, nothing to say. Mine would be to sleep in a bed. Since I've been in sleeping in bunks for so long, one thing I'd love to do is just to get like four king size beds and just like shove them together. <laughs> roll around. <laughs> just roll around for like a day. Um, having a cat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I want I want a cat. A cat that loves the ocean. The ocean cat. Yeah, that is my dream. Oh. Can we get a cat? We need a baby, like a choose born baby, so we teach him to be a, pi a, pirate, a pirate cat. A pirate cat. And we put him a patch, make him a little hat. <laughs> what do you think about that? Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, let's find a stray cat in the Azores, we'll keep him right in your bunk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm fine with that, you know? I spoon that cat every night. Next up on Delos, things get weird in the Bermuda Triangle. She's losing it. She's talking, talking to the water. Uh, what's your wish for the day, Woody? What kind of activities do you want to accomplish? I think we should all go for a birthday swim in our birthday suits. And we hit the worst lightning storm I've ever seen. Whoa, fuck. 
That was right above us. Like across the sky above us. What's up, Delos Tribe? Check out these sweet new flags we got made. We heard you guys' request that you wanted some, but first we had to get one on Delos and torture test it to make sure that it was high quality. And it turns out it is. So there's a fresh new batch waiting in the shop for you now. This is Delos behind the scenes, how we got the shot. Sexy Reuben hair flip, take 54. Flip it! Flip it! Oh god. Oh. oh. <laughs> Don't hit your head, yeah. Rubes. My neck. 